You're welcome back. It's still The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. And we're looking at the headlines at this time. So of the press, we're starting with something natural. <laughs> OK, I'm saying that because it's nature news that we're looking at. And the first headline on nature news newspaper is Earth Day. Environmentalists, experts advocate change of behavior to save the planet. That's uh, the major headline there. We also have a delicate approves climate agenda for, for Oshun. Oshun Bajo to deliver climate change lecture in U.S. Versity. And we have agency warns Nigerians of lightning strikes in May. Already we've seen a five-story building collapsing mm -hmm. in, uh, is it a papa, or somewhere in Lagos. And they say it's because of lightning. So now they are warning, warning us that in May, there's going to be a lot of that that we'll be seeing. Although that excuse that it was from lightning is... is, is um, uh, well, is, we is, leave, is, leave that to us. Not many people are taking it seriously <laughs> because uh, we've been hearing lots of cases of building collapse in Lagos, mm -hmm. which has also prompted the Lagos state government to uh, mark some buildings for Even demolition Banana in Island. Banana Island. Yes, yeah. Yes. So um, more okay. attention needs to be paid to structures. Okay, um, there is also in that newspaper uh, something about uh, animal protein versus uh, plant protein, what you sh need to know. So maybe uh, there are some plants, maybe like for the vegetarians, they know uh, some plants that will give them the kind of protein that they need to sustain themselves. Uh, we also have climate change sets a new drought, food, heat wave records. That's the report uh, coming from Nature newspaper nature news um what do we have from the punch okay punch starts with sudan conflict uh the headline uh, government seeks egypt's support to rescue 5500 nigerians by road nigerian government seeking um the help of egypt uh to remove nigerians rescue nigerians 5500 of them by road then the riders federal government once, as Nigerian students pay $100 for a dangerous road, and then you have another rider, we are waiting for Sudanese government to provide safe corridor for evacuation. That's uh, 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 the minister uh, there. Then you have pictures, the pictures there. Uh, you have um, pictures of uh, were taken in Sudan. Yeah, Sudanese refugees and supporters protesting the ongoing civil war between uh, two factions at the Dam Square, as well as French and other nationalities on arrival at the French Embassy military air base in Djibouti during the evacuation of around 100 people from Sudan on the first French flight out of the war hit country on Sunday. So France is taking out mm. the people like some other countries and Nigerians are waiting to see same thing happen for Nigerians living in Sudan. You also have Tinubu may return today to meet APC National Working Committee. You find that in page 14 of the Punch newspaper that the president-elect Bala Ahmed Tinubu may be returning to Nigeria today. Many Nigerians have had questions and uh, speculations about his whereabouts. So this will no doubt uh, end that speculation today uh, if he returns, as we are seeing in this headline. And moving on to page four, you find two children, five others burnt to death in Lagos Ibadan Highway crash. Uh, two children uh, and five others burned to death in Lagos, uh, uh, you know, at the Lagos Ibadan Highway to, uh, yesterday. Then uh, the Lagos state government blames developers as another three-story building collapses. You mentioned that mm -hmm. earlier in that of the newspaper. The Lagos state government is blaming developers as it should. Okay. Well, everybody has a blame. Lagos state, how much of the uh, inspection is being done. Uh, nowadays, you just see X marks on the building, and X means bring more money. That's what it is, because mm -hmm. the building continues, and before you know it, it's finished, and people are living in it. Even places that were marked uh, for 
no go as no go areas for buildings and all that i see people erecting estates in it so lagos blames developers developers will blame lagos um the lagos state government the people are the ones that are the victim of the yeah the all of them have been blamed and <laughs> fingered and pointed but to be complicit in all of that yeah. happening because you have those who should be supervising yeah. you have those who should be check checking and monitoring you have those who should be sanctioning mm -hmm. and those who are just not doing anything. <laughs> okay, we move to the nation now, uh, where we see a story. Nigerian students lament uh, ordeal in crisis town Sudan. So we've talked about this many uh, in other newspapers as well. So um, we move on. Uh, the other story is Namani uh, asks Obi to discontinue petition, and we've also seen uh, the story that is saying three ways out of debt crisis by Rwani. So he is. Um, uh, offering some solutions how Nigeria can get out of this uh, debt crisis. Well, we do hope that the solutions are good enough and that the government will take it. 40% pay rise excites federal workers. Uh, Nigerian government has said that they are going to um, increase the salaries of uh, federal workers and it excites them. It has already entered the market. Everybody knows. Landlords know all as well, but it has not been implemented. Well, let's see how that goes. Um, then under the Nigerian students ordeal, uh, the federal government is saying it's dangerous to evacuate uh, our 5,500 citizens without clearance. And then the US, UK, France, Russia move out nationals. Okay, we've seen that in the other paper as well. So, Okay, so we move to the Guardian newspaper where the leading headline, yes, so there you have it. The Guardian newspaper, rising poverty, cost dumping, e-SIM adoption, and impact on Nigeria's car production. Well, that's the major headlines there. Uh, rising poverty, uh, cost dumping, e-SIM adoption, and then impact on that on Nigeria's car production. So you move down, you have another uh, smaller headline there, which it's... Uh, Ayetoro, Ondo community sleeping into Atlantic Ocean. This is, this is a gory sight. This is something that really needs to be looked into. Ondo community sleeping into, you know, Atlantic Ocean. You wonder what happens to the people living here, the fate of those mm -hmm. in this Ayetoro community. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a land they've been uh, in for, for centuries, uh, possibly. So evacuating them may not just simply be the solution but if you're evacu evacuating them where are you taking them to something needs to be done maybe something to um, protect the village from the atlantic ocean or to remove them to somewhere else that is safe enough and provide some accommodation for them well we've seen we've seen um idp camps <laughs> and how they are mm -hmm. and all that so it's 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 a really worrisome thing like you said it's gory just yeah, they also it. need to find out why the water is there. Mm -hmm. Why is it coming in there? Mm -hmm. Can it be stopped? We had some stories when we saw the floods that wrecked havoc in Nigeria last year. Was it uh -huh. not last yeah, year? Yeah. And so we had the stories of how it was our fault as a country mm -hmm. that we're supposed to have done some, thing, uh, some things at the border between Nigeria and Cameroon, which we didn't mm -hmm. do, which led to that. Yeah. And so these are some of the questions we need to be asking. How did the water get there and could it have been stopped? Mm -hmm. And so uh, moving on to the next headline, Sudan. And that's the biggest story today. Yeah. And we'll continue until we see our children and our brothers and sisters back from that war-torn country. Sudan, federal government negotiates safe, safe exit for stranded Nigerians. Uh, you have the picture of uh, Onyema there. Yeah. And yeah. then you have that of Honorable Abike Dabri Erewa. And then, um, how unregulated st state agencies, firms engage in multimillionaire scam? Okay. That would interest all <laughs> residents. <laughs> how unregulated state agencies, firms engage in multimillionaire scam? And then here we have the they picture. Are, they are the new Omonilis yeah. without calling themselves Omonilis. Yeah. And they, they scam you out of your money. Okay. And then looking down, you have that picture there, that very unfortunate picture there of another Lagos building collapse 24 hours after Governor Samuel visit to Banana Island site. Mm. 
Okay, uh, those are about the headlines. Uh, we have Nika Gule, uh, who is standing by to join us. We did tell you that Inkotaria will be joining us, but um, he couldn't make it. We're glad that Nika Gule is already here and ready to talk with us. Good morning and welcome, Nika Gule. Thank you very much, and good morning to our viewers. Okay. How is the UK today? It is, uh, it's been raining uh, through the weekend. Um, but we're hoping for a better weather today. Uh, I think the sun is out there. Here, when you see the sun, you celebrate as if uh, <laughs> you've uh, got a bonanza. That's, that's the advantage we have in Nigeria, but we don't even know. Yeah, well, here the sun, uh, sometimes it feels like hell because it's really, really hot. As if you can make a bar with the sun that is shining. <laughs> okay, well, um, how, how is the response, before we go into the newspapers, how is the response of the UK to the war in Suza Sudan? Do, do they have people in Sudan? Have they evacuated those people if they do have people or they did have people in Sudan? What has their response been like? Yes, the news broke yesterday that uh, the UK government, uh, during the night of Sunday, they went, uh, or during the night of sun, uh, Saturday, going into Sunday, daybreak into Sunday, uh, they went to Sudan uh, and they lifted, they lifted uh, all the diplomats of the UK that are in Sudan. And so uh, what the, citizens of uh, the UK are now asking is what is the fate of the UK citizens who are still trapped in Sudan. And I believe that uh, the government will be working out a plan for them as well. Usually uh, they don't make known to the public these plans, uh, just like the one for the diplomats uh, until they had taken them out out of Sudan before they made the news public. So I believe they will also be working on a plan uh, for the citizens. And it was not just the UK that they lifted their diplomats out of Sudan. Uh, the, the Americans also did the same, just as the French. But all the newspapers are carrying it. Um, the Nigerians don't seem to believe in the plans that the federal government is making. And the federal government is saying they shouldn't make alternative plans. Uh, the people who are in Sudan now shouldn't make alternative plans. They are negotiating with the government to, to airlift those people, to evacuate those people. And so far, even the diplomats, I'm not sure, have been removed from the country. They still are saying they need to do something. So I, I don't know what your thoughts are on the response of our government, the Nigerian government, to the evacuation of our citizens from war-torn Sudan? The response of our government is as slow as ever. We are never proactive. We allow things to deteriorate and degenerate to abysmal levels before we react. I mean, it's the same thing that happened in Ukraine uh, during uh, uh, in, in this uh, Russian, Russian, uh, Ukraine uh, war. Uh, first and foremost, there is no government in Sudan to negotiate with. There is a total breakdown of law and order. Uh, what is happening in Sudan is uh, terrible uh, because you see, uh, countries spend a lot of money to arm their armed forces billions of dollars to arm their armed forces to protect them against external aggression or to take care of internal security issues that the police are, are unable to handle. But in Sudan, uh, two branches of the armed forces who should be working together as, as uh, comrades, as Esprit de Corps, have turned the guns that the country has bought for them against each other. You know, this is a situation that I, I find difficult to even understand if it has happened elsewhere. The two branches of the armed forces have turned the guns against each other, and in the process, they are killing the citizens they were meant to be protecting. So there's no government there to negotiate with. There are these two warlords that are fighting. So the Nigerian government, if they were serious, number one, they should have utilized the 72-hour ceasefire 
that was declared by these two warlords. Even though the ceasefire itself was not very effective for the whole duration, but it was a window of opportunity for the Nigerian government to come in to, to, to evacuate our citizens. That didn't happen. Now, for the Americans, the French, and other Western nations to be going in to evacuate their citizens is to tell you that they must have got enough intelligence to tell them that the situation in Sudan will soon uh, degenerate to, to, to total breakdown in law and order and anarchy will reign. That is why they have removed their, their diplomats. Now, the Nigerian government should be also making similar efforts. Uh, the, the UK government, as they have announced, they did not use the, the, the Khartoum International Airport in the capital. Rather, they found an airstrip to the north of the capital. And that is where they were able to land British uh, Air Force planes in the dead of the night to get their diplomats out. Can Nigeria try something like that? At least if Nigeria cannot go alone, let Nigeria collaborate with other uh, countries so that the Nigerians who are, who are, who are trapped in Khartoum will be, will be taken out. So this is something that a state of emergency has to be declared. And, and you know, we keep talking about the responsiveness of government to crisis that Nigerians face. In the UK here, the prime minister, he had a COBRA meeting. A COBRA meeting is the highest security meeting that the government of the UK holds anytime there's a crisis. That is the meeting that even if they want to declare war, is a COBRA meeting that will declare war. The, the, the prime, minister, prime Minister had a COBRA meeting with all those who are needed to be there. And it is from that COBRA meeting that this evacuation of the diplomats has emerged. In Nigeria, what has the president said about this? What has the defense minister said about this? What has any senior person in the government of Nigeria said about this when our citizens are trapped there in Sudan? So this is the problem. It's as if we, do, we don't normally have a government. Because All right. Not well, well, we'll, the needs of Nigerians. Yeah. Yesterday we learned that uh, between last night and this morning, that's from Garba Shehu, uh, chief press, uh, the media man of the government, that Nigerians in, in Sudan would be evacuated. And we're also seeing from the headlines this morning on Punch newspaper that the Nigerian government is seeking the help of Egypt to evacuate 5,500 Nigerians from Sudan. How does that um, hit you that we are seeking the help of Egypt to do this? And also, you may also want to respond to the fact that we learned yesterday that some of our students in Sudan uh, resorted to self-help and tasked themselves $100 each to find escape through uh, Khartoum to Ethiopia. But they were rejected. They were denied you know, passage by Ethiopian government. Uh, the borders were shut off to Nigerians, but nationals from other countries such as Kenya, uh, uh, you know, Somali, Yemenis, they were all allowed to pass. How do you respond to this too? Well, if uh, the Nigerian government is seeking collaboration with neighboring countries on how to evacuate our citizens, then it's a good step. Let them go ahead to do that. It shouldn't bother us now how they are able to get our citizens out of uh, Sudan. They should just get them out. And I believe that uh, uh, even the Western nations that are evacuating their diplomats, they must be collaborating uh, with uh, some of the nations that are, are bordering. There. I think uh, the, the UK ahead had uh, a collaboration in some way as well, even though it was UK Air Force planes that went in there. You know, so so that that is fine. Now, the on the aspect of the students trying to to uh, help themselves by organizing their escape, I think that's very dangerous. Uh, my advice to students would be stay indoors, don't step out because the situation is very volatile, and in that kind of volatile situation, you you may not even be a target, but you can be caught out in a crossfire. You know, so the best situation for them is to remain indoors, except if a ceasefire is declared or there is an organized evacuation, either broken by the UN or so, that they can venture to step out. Otherwise, let the students stay indoors. Okay, um, uh, we'll, we'll take another story. Um, 
Now, let's just look at Adamawa Reg. Adamawa Reg, um, the police begin probe of suspended Adamawa Reg. In, in the meantime, the Reg was said to be uh, missing in action, as it were. I don't know if it is, he has been found, but the probe is going on. Uh, but um, so far, the actions taken, what do you think about them? Well, uh, it's, uh, you know, the way we do things in Nigeria is, is very laughable. And if we continue to do things in Nigeria like this, our so-called aspiration to join the 20 top industrialized nations in the world will remain a pipe dream. You know, I keep saying it any, anywhere I have the opportunity that if it is Nigeria's avowed commitment that we want to join the top 20 industrialized nations, we have no choice than to do what those nations are doing. You know, if you want to join someone to be a degree holder and the person is in the university and you, you are in the motor park doing a touting, I wonder how you will ever join that man to become a degree holder. So uh, this situation here is simple. This man flouted the, the, the law. Uh, by engaging in brigandage, which is what I would term what he did. And after he did that, with the full support of the security uh, chiefs that are posted in, in Adamawa, there needed to have been very sweet reaction, very sweet reaction from the, from the law enforcement agents. Uh, uh, all the security chiefs, together with the REC and everybody involved in that show of shame, should have been arrested. You know, and, and 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 put behind bars for for interrogation, and we will not be today talking about the wreck is now missing. He is now missing. If the wreck is missing, have the police declared him as a wanted man? It is INEC telling us they can't find this man. It is not INEC's job to find this man. It is the police job to find this man. And if the Inspector General of Police is yet to address Nigerians on the situation in Adamawa, particularly with respect to this wreck, then that is a failing by the, the, the highest security chief in the land. It's not a, an, 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 an INEC uh, issue. Okay, let's talk about uh, staying with the nation newspaper. Right at the bottom, we have what appears to be like uh, some sort of advertisement um, uh, talking about uh, the Senate APC, President, yeah, talking about the Senate President, uh, a sort of um, talk about the Senate Presidency. And this is courtesy of the APC stakeholders and uh, talking about uh, support for Senator uh, Barao Jibril, who is um, a member of the National Assembly, one of the House of uh, Representatives and three terms. Uh, the Senate. What do you think about this camper anyway for the head, for the position of the Senate president as we move forward to form a new government? Uh, well, uh, you know, politicians will always have to, to do their games. So all sorts of games will be playing out now. Uh, one thing I want to say is that uh, the current uh, Senate president, um, Ahmed Lawan, should not also be ruled out of the game. A lot of people will say, well, he's from the Northeast, uh, the same region with the vice president. But uh, let's not forget that, as we speak today, the vice president is from the Southwest and the speaker of the House of Representatives is from the Southwest. So uh, it's all about politics. At the end of the day, we are going to see how they will play it out. It's, it's quite difficult at this point to even uh, postulate what is going to happen. I mean, look at the case of 2015. In 2015, uh, the APC had a majority uh, of senators uh, in the Red Chamber. But it ended up that uh, Bukola Saraki of the PDP became a Senate president in what looked pretty much like a, a palace coup that was executed when the APC senators themselves where they were, they were more or less camped to go to a meeting at the International Conference Center. And all of them trooped out to the meeting while the PDP senators, together with some other 
uh, a few senators from other parties, now went to the National Assembly, convened the National Assembly, and made uh, Bukola Saraki uh, the Senate president. By the time the APC senators got wind of what was happening, and they ran back to the Senate chambers, uh, Saraki was sitting as the Senate president, and they had to go to Saraki to give, give him uh, their letters uh, of return so that he can swear them in as senators. That is the kind of thing that can happen in Nigerian politics. So on this one, I will say hey, we have to wait and see how these games are going to play out. Anything is possible. Yeah. Okay. Um, maybe we'll just take one from uh, Nature News. Um, this uh, headlines that uh, climate change has set a new drought, flood, and heat wave records. And I don't know how uh, other countries are tackling it. How dangerous is this? Because, okay, someone as high as the former uh, president of uh, America doesn't even believe in this climate change thing. He says it's just a conspiracy theory. And, uh, but some people are very passionate about it and talking against it. How is the UK handling it, for instance? And what are your thoughts? Let me say that uh, as a person, my own personal view is that uh, climate change is real uh, because if you see the volume of, um, of emissions into the environment, it's, it's humongous. Uh, as I'm speaking to you now, I'm, I'm sitting very close to Heathrow Airport, uh, just like a, a mile or two away. Uh, and at Heathrow Airport, an aircraft takes off from Heathrow Airport like every 30 seconds or at most one minute. Every time, if you go to Heathrow Airport, the aircraft are actually on the queue on the ground so that as that, as that one goes off and takes off, it depending, depending on the size of the aircraft, if it is the same size, the next one is following it, immediately that one is in the air. And in the same way, on the other wrong way, the aircraft are stacked on a queue in the air. You see them on a queue in the air coming into land. So, and each of these aircraft is push, pushing so much emissions into the environment. So with all the other machines that we have and all of that. So even here in the UK, there are activists who believe that uh, the government is not doing enough as regards uh, climate change. And they have been disrupting uh, events. You know, if we heard they disrupted one of the important uh, race, uh, 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 horse races, uh, recently, they even disrupted the snooker uh, championship. They are just about finishing a four-day protest in the center of London and all of that to try and draw attention to climate change. And um, the, the former uh, U.S. President Donald Trump, like, like you have mentioned, he was very wrong to have thought that climate change was a scam. It is not a scam. It's real. And it is very important that governments should take care of the environment. Because if you don't take care of the environment, the environment is going to come after you. And that is the kind of thing that we have been seeing. But then, there are efforts that are being made. Uh, there, there are definitely efforts that are being made. Like here where I am in this, my village, called West Threaten, our train service uh, used to be running on diesel. And they have discarded all those trains now. Every single train they have now is running on electricity. And that electricity is coming from renewable energy. You know, because uh, several years ago, our electricity supplier sent us a letter to say, your electricity is now 100% from renewable sources. So those steps are, are being taken. We know of Tesla that produces electric cars. They are gaining more and more market share of these electric cars. You know, and now uh, there are developments like in the solar solar energy, where um, uh, you can have solar panels and just transfer the electricity generated directly to consumers without passing through batteries in the daytime. Then at night time, you use maybe wind or hydro if you have those sources near you. So all of those things are happening, and I think Nigeria should also begin to to catch on on this. In Nigeria today, I don't think there is any organized and coordinated plan for dealing with the climate change matter. You know, when Nigeria is still uh, digging the ground to, to produce fossil fuels that contribute a lot to, of damage to the climate, uh, instead of us looking at uh, 
renewable energy sources that we have in abundance. Like we're speaking about the ever presence of the sun in Nigeria. You are guaranteed at least eight to 10 hours of sunshine in Nigeria every day. Why are we not having solar panels in villages and our small cities to generate power for our environment? Look at the bad beach. If you put wind turbines by the bad beach, they will be turning 24 seven, generating power for Lagos and the environment and the environs. And so we have a hydro. No Almost everywhere in Nigeria, you will see a river. Why are we not using those sources? So that is one thing Nigeria has to have. And the incoming governments, in setting the agenda for them, they need to have a department for renewable energy that is manned by a serious-minded person. Indeed. We yeah. no longer have Babich, though. <laughs> you just made that point. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Babich is now something else. Um, but um, Yeah, they, 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 they turned Babich into, into a city. I, I, I saw it when I went to Lagos, and I said, look, you guys are joking with the environment. They can come after you. But you see, you can put these wind turbines right in the water. In other countries where you go, you see the wind turbines sitting right inside the water, facing the, the ocean. And then the wind is puffing on these wind turbines. And as the wind turbines are turning, that is electricity that is being generated. It's not even a difficult technology. You know, just imagine how much of that that we can we can get for 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 for, for the southwest or all the all the states that are on the Atlantic, all the way to Calabar. Okay, uh, well, thank you very much, Nika Gule, uh, for being a part of this program today. Uh, unfortunately, uh, this is how much we can take from the press this morning. So we wish you well wherever you are. Stay safe. Thank you very much. I have a nice day. And you too. A nice day to all our viewers. You too. Okay, so uh, from the press, um, I, it's just a it's just a um, an unfortunate thing that we can sit here and then our brothers and sisters are still trying to see how they can get home. We do hope that the government will be more proactive, more more active. I don't know if that is proactive. They are reactive now, as it were. But there will be, there will be more effort to make sure that our people are home. Yeah, this is not a time to speak English and grammar. This is a time to act. And that, I think, is a major problem that our government have had over the years. Speaking, 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 talking, talking, and less of action. And especially when it comes to situations such as this where there is need for urgent evacuation or intervention to save nigerians in problem across the globe and it is a primary responsibility of any government to protect to provide to help the citizens especially in terms of security so especially the students there they are the primary focus the students there are the primary focus at this point in time uh, so Let's uh, wait till we're able to speak with our guests in a few minutes from now, uh, from Neymar, to find out what is being done right now. Because we were told uh, yesterday evening that between last night and today, Nigerians will be evacuated from Sudan. So as soon as we can, it's time for us to have that interview. We're going to have it and then we'll get the details on that. Just stay with us. We'll be back in a moment.